What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. Today's video, we're focusing on two factoring techniques. We're going to break this down and reteach it so that we could strengthen our foundation so that we could answer those more complicated factoring questions. And with that being said, let's get started. First aspect we're looking at, guys, is going to be the zero product property. So that means the equation is going to be equal to zero. And to properly solve, we have to set our factors equal to zero. But before we get there, let's touch on the importance of C and how understanding C makes factoring easy. So for one, if C is positive, that means factor one and factor two are either both positive or both negative, meaning they, had, they both had the same sign. Now, to know whether it's positive or negative, we can look at our middle term, right? So with this being said, because this is positive, we know both of our factors have to be positive to get, an answer, to get a positive answer when we add and get a positive answer when we multiply. So when I break this down, right, we know my factors, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Only this combination, when you add, to give you this 9x in the middle. So as a result, I have x plus 5, x plus 4, and both of these are equal to 0. Now, students make a mistake because they just leave it like this. But when we're using a zero product property, we have to then go one more step and do x plus 5 is equal to 0, and we'll get x is equal to negative 5 as an answer. And then we need to do the same thing with x plus 4 is equal to 0, and then we get x is equal to negative 4. Now, in our second example now, there's a little difference. So C is positive, right? That means both our signs are either positive or they're both negative. But because of 7x is negative, that means when we add these two factors, we're going to get a negative number. So that lets me know both of them are negative. All right, so let's break this down. We could break down 10 as 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. We know 2 plus 5 could give us that 7. So what do we need to do now? So we have x, right? We have 2 and we have 5. For us to get a negative when we add, both of these have to be negative, right, to get negative 7. But then when we multiply both of these negatives, it'll give us our positive 10. Now, the other situation, right, is when c is negative. So when C is negative, that lets you know that your signs are opposite, one positive, one negative, right? And to know which one is positive or negative, you look at the middle term. If the middle term, I'm sorry, the larger number is going to take the sign of the middle term. So this is what I mean. So once we draw this out, right, our factors, 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. None of these combinations are going to get us 1 when we add or subtract except for this last one, 5 and 6. Now, for us to get this correct, right, when we multiply, we get negative 30, but when we add or combine them, we get a negative 1. So for me to get a negative 1, that means the larger number, right, 6, is going to have to be negative and then my 5 is going to be positive. Once we distribute this back, right, and actually we, let's just do this real quick before we wrap this problem up. Once we distribute this back, we're going to get x squared plus 5x minus 6x minus 30. Once we combine negative 5 and positive 6, we will get our original quadratic equation, which is x squared minus x minus 30. So if you learn these basics when we're talking about factoring trinomials, this is going to make it so much easier when we get to the more challenging aspects of quadratics. And now we're going to go on to the second method for factoring. So the next method that we're going to look at, guys, is when we use the quadratic formula. And I'm going to show you guys that quadratic formula. So the formula is x is equal to, let me make sure I write this right, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c 
And this whole entire thing is divided by two times eight. Now for my students who are like me in algebra one, you're gonna say, yo, Peters, where all these variables come from? And I'm gonna show you guys. So do you remember that formula? AX squared plus BX plus C. That's the quadratic formula. And what they did here was they didn't give it to us as a trinomial. We have to rearrange the equation by subtracting 18. So I'll have x squared minus x minus 18 is equal to zero. So let's pause right here. When do we want to use this quadratic formula? When we cannot factor using any of the other methods, okay? So when we look here, there's no factors of 18 that when we add and subtract it, it could give us a negative one. And if we try to complete the square, that may be a challenging process as well. So typically we use this when there's no other option for us. So that's the first thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug these numbers in. So we have x is equal to the opposite of b. b is negative x. That's just negative 1. So now this is positive 1 plus or minus, and then we have b squared. So remember, b is just negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 18, right? This is our a, this is our b, this is our c, just so that you guys know. Now we're going to divide this all over 2 times a, which is just 1. So we go down here, x is equal to 1 plus or minus, and this should be the square root of 73, if I'm not mistaken, all over 2. Now we can leave this as is, but typically what happens is your teacher or the test, they may split your answer. So they may say, hey, x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 73, over 2, their answer is going to be a decimal, by the way, right? And they're going to say, hey, x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 73 over 2. So for my students who, are, who do not understand where the two equations come from, they come from the plus or minus. So one equation, we're going to add the square root. One equation, we're going to subtract. And typically, the answer, they give it to us as a solution set. So where can I find some space? Let's do it right here. So they'll say x is equal to, and they'll have these braces, and they'll have a number, let's say 7, 8. And this is sometimes how we'll see it expressed. But for this answer, you know, this, this wouldn't be right. It would be left like this or a decimal, okay? But before we wrap this video up, I want to show you one more thing on this method that's very important, especially when you want to solve correctly. So let's erase and go back through with it. So the second equation does something that I know you students don't like, and I hate it too, I'll be honest with you. So they give us the equation ax squared is equal to 20x. So the first thing you're saying is, hold on, Peter, there's only two terms. You're absolutely right. So let's get them on the same side. So now we have ax squared minus 20x is equal to zero. Here is our a, the x squared term. Here is our b, the term with just a single variable. So what you notice is there is no c. And guys, that's going to happen. If you're watching this video right now, I want you to know they will do that. You're not crazy. What you're going to do is what I do right now. So let's get, let's get to it. So we have x is equal to opposite of b, positive 20 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 squared minus 4 times a, which is 8, times c. There is no c. So what do we plug in? Zero. There's no c. All over 2 times a, which is 2 times 8. So at this point, let me grab my calculator. That's right. All right, so we grab the calculator. And what we're going to have now is x is equal to 20 plus or minus. Let's make sure we get this right. The square root 
of 400 all over 16. So the, 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 the lucky thing for us, guys, or the fortunate thing for us is that this is a perfect square. So I can show you the solution set as well. So now let's not do that. Let's switch colors. So now we simplify this, right? So now my equation is going to be x is equal to 20 plus or minus 20 all over 16. So those are the two equations. And we're going to erase this just to get a little bit of space. If you guys need to look back at it, just rewind the video. So here we go. Two equations and then we're wrapping it all up. So x is equal to 20 plus 20 over 16. So x is equal to 40 over 16. If we divide this by 2, we're going to get 20 over 8. If we divide by 2 again, we'll get 10 over 4. If we divide by 2 again, we will get 5 over 2. So here goes our first answer, 5 over 2. Then we go back, we do the second equation, right? So the second equation, we're going to do x is equal to, let's get more in the middle, x is equal to 20 minus 20 over 16. So we'll say x is equal to 0. Now, on the test or the exam, you're going to see this expressed as a solution set that will look something like this. x is equal to, and then in braces, we have 0, comma, 5 over 2. But what I want you guys to know as well, guys, is that 5 divided by 2 is just 2.5. So they may leave it as a fraction, 5 over 2, or they may put it as a decimal, 2.5. So just make sure that you know the, the decimal for this or the whole number decimal for that, because they're going to try to trick you. But we thank you guys so much for joining us today on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. Really hope this video was helpful for you guys. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and thank you guys so much for joining us again with Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.